Hello. Good morning. And welcome to Lovely. It is lovely. When we left you, we were just coming up to Waters Meeting at Preston Brook. But we didn't tell you which way we were going, did we? <laughs> we did a right turn. Uh, still on the Bridgewater Canal, just. But we had to stop at the Chandler's because we needed a new stove grate, didn't we? The jiggly one. Because the old one snapped. Yeah. Uh, but the reason we coming off the Bridgewater Canal is that we're only allowed to be on there for a week or ten days, depending yeah. on who you listen to nowadays. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because the Bridgewater is not owned by the Canal and River Trust; it's owned by Peel, and they own the Manchester Ship Canal. Yes. But if you've got a CRT license, you're allowed to have a week for free, but then you have to pay. And we spent nearly a week in Runcorn, so we had to get off the Bridgewater, otherwise we would have had to have paid for a license for that. We had to run. Uh, they do have this thing though, uh, what's it called? Uh, not receptacle, what you put your glasses in, is it? <laughs> is it is a receptacle what you put your glasses in? Not no, it's a glasses case. Responsible. Re uh, re reciprocal. <sighs> they have a reciprocal agreement, so people with CRT licences can go on for a week and they can go on CRT yeah. canals for a week. That's right. Uh, but because we tight and we got no money, we had no. to come off. So we called at the Chandler's for the stove grate, then through Preston Brook Tunnel, which is 1,239 yards long. Ooh. And it's so tight in there, you can't pass another boat no. unless you kind of grease each other up in treks <laughs> and slide past each other. But we ain't, we ain't got any treks, we've only got lure pack, uh, so it don't work. Uh, but it is lovely in there, the ventilation shafts, there's one in the middle and it's like this huge cathedral thing, isn't it? It's massive. It really is nice. And when you come out of the tunnel, there's a sign that tells you that you're now on the Trent and Mersey Canal. Yay! Which is a clue to where we are now. <laughs> <laughs> on the Trent and Mersey Canal, there's a stop lock called Dutton Stop Lock, and the Trent and Mersey Canal Company built it to save their water. But when we passed, it was a bit weird because it was all level. We're all on the same level. Both gates just opened on their own. <laughs> uh, so we carried on, and it's not like the Trent and Mersey that we remember, which is like Hare Castle and Stoke and Etruria down that way. Is it's it? lovely here. It is a completely different landscape, and that's where we are now. We're in Dutton. Uh, which is about 30 miles north of Harecastle Tunnel, but on that same canal. And you know, I always like to moor where there's a bit of a story going on, don't you? Oh, yes. So if you want to go put the kettle on, I'm going to warm me Jack and Nori voice up. Okay then. <laughs> go on. <laughs> Back in September 2012, there'd been a lot of intense rainfall around Cheshire. There was flooding everywhere, and even the groundwater table was rising to levels never seen before. Here in Dutton, the ground was so saturated that it almost liquefied, and the canal collapsed. There was a major breach, and it sent thousands of tonnes of mud and rocks and nearly 25 million litres of water cascading from the canal down the bank into the farmer's field below. The crater left behind by the breach was so big you could have fit 12 double-decker buses in there. It was huge, and the Canal and River Trust were scrambling to save 60,000 fish that were trapped in the one and a half mile drained section of Canal. All the resources were focused on fixing the breach, so money was diverted from other maintenance projects around the network. It was originally expected to cost about one and a half million pounds. The final total was over two million. The Canal and River Trust were desperate to get this canal reopened in time for the spring season of 2013, but they were having problems getting permission from the landowners to get heavy moving equipment on site. There's no roads anywhere near where we are at the moment, so they had to come across the fields, and it took over two months to get that permission, which meant that work didn't start on repairing the canal until late January 2013. It took just over seven months to carry out the repairs. 12,000 tonnes of stone was used to strengthen and rebuild the embankment and secure the canal bed. There's a new drainage system built into the embankment so any excess water can drain away and not start to liquefy the embankment again. And there's also this concrete wash wall, 140 metres long. It's been made into this gorgeous visitor mooring and you can see on a clear day right over towards Ellesmere Port. Mm -hmm. 
The first boat, after the repairs, came down here on the 2nd of May 2013. And there was a proper carnival atmosphere. During the breach, the milestone from the towpath was washed down the embankment with all the mud and rocks and water. And it's a miracle that it was found, although it was in a sorry state. But the Trent and Mersey Canal Society took it upon themselves to restore it back to its original condition. And after some TLC and a bit of paint, it's now standing back where it was, just a few feet away from where the breach happened, and it's looking like new again. Today we're making a relatively short trip, it's about four miles from the Dutton Breach site to the village of Barnton, which is near Anderton, also known as Jam Town. Jam Town. Mm. Do you I know like why? It. Have they got jam butty mines? Well actually it was said in the late 1800s that the people of Barnton ate jam butties. Oh, they so, have got jam butty mines. So that they can own not only their houses, but by their neighbours too. Wow. I don't even understand. That's that. weird. I don't know. I think the people of Barnton were gargling their own bong water. <laughs> Just down at the bottom of the embankment is the River Weaver. And up until about the end of the last century, a lot of commercial boats, coastal boats with loads of seamen on it would be going up and down the river delivering stuff. There's a nice footpath down there and it starts all the way back in Northwich. You can walk all the way up towards Frodsham past Dutton Locks. Once you get past Dutton Locks, there's a lovely woodland owned by the Woodland Trust. And it's acres and acres and it's just really quiet, so quiet. I managed a few naked walks up there this Did week. You? It's been lovely though, and it? it's been lovely and sunny. Yeah. Bridge 209, and according to the book, there's some services there at the boatyard. It's a, a hire boat company. And we checked it out and we gave them a call, and they're supposed to open at 9 o'clock today, and it's nearly an hour past 9 o'clock, and it's all locked up. Water uh, point's locked up. And yeah, even the water point has got a padlock and a, a like an anti vandal thing to stop people using the water point, which I mean, there's probably a, a, a reasonable explanation, but it's not that helpful when you look in the guidebook and it says there's a water point and diesel so you kind of prepare and plan and then you get there and there's nobody there and they don't answer the phone and everything's padlocked up that's the first water point i've ever known that's actually padlocked up is it you yep oh well no shower tonight then <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people have been asking us about the new boat build and when it's going to happen. Well, the reason it's been delayed is because of the restrictions. Yeah. We want to film as much detail of the build as possible. And that's, we've not been able to do that because of the restrictions. We can't get people that close together. But hopefully in the UK, the roadmap suggests that towards the end of June, restrictions could be lifted. So if that's the case, hopefully, fingers crossed, we're going to be starting the build later this summer, July, August time. So, keep your fingers crossed. Yes.
I love the speckled light view. Speckled it. Ooh. Uh, we're just going up to Saltersford Tunnel, and it's one of three tunnels on this stretch from Preston Brook. The first one, do you remember Preston Brook Tunnel? I remember. And it's a little bit higgledy piggledy because it was the early days of canal building and the skills weren't really there fully, so none of them are totally straight, a bit like you. <laughs> and the people who built the canal wanted them to be wide enough to take wide beam boats, and they're not. That what? didn't work, did it? That didn't work either, so it's not perfect, and there's no towpath through. So the old boatmen used to have to leg the boat through the tunnel while the horses were walked over the top. Do you fancy being walked over the top? <laughs> not really! Right in between Saltersford and Barnton Tunnel, there's this lovely pool where the canal widens. And when the sun's shining like it is today, it's a mini oasis. It'd be a lovely place to moor if we didn't already have plans for today. You might have heard us talking about the Trent and Mersey Canal being closed because of a landslip. It happened back in January during Storm Christoph, and the embankment collapsed and hundreds of tons of rock and mud and vegetation just fell into the canal, blocking it, and the canal and river just had to close it. Well, they've been working hard for three months to make it safe, and they have partially reopened just a narrow channel, just enough to get the boat through. The thing that was most dangerous is it happened right next to a gas main that goes over the canal and that's why it's taken so long to try and make it safe. So we've got to go through as slow as we can. Now, driving Miss Daisy is used to that, aren't you? Two, he two, says driving Miss Daisy but he's always telling me to slow down. Two mile an hour, that's, you've got to speed up, haven't you? <laughs> Well, that were a short trip. Nice to see so many boats out, though. No. <laughs> no, it's not. No. <laughs> you get used to it, well, during lockdown and then over the winter, so we've hardly seen any boats moving about, and they're all starting to come out again. It's a bit weird. It's a bit like the Crick Boat Show. <laughs> isn't it? Just hundreds of boats. Speaking of which, there is going to be a live Crick Show this August. <gasps> Are we going? Yes. Are you going? Are you? Oh, good. We might see you there, then. <laughs> We are moored right next to the Anderton boat lift, which carries boats down onto the River Weaver that I was talking about earlier. Might tell you a bit more about that next week. If we go down it, we might just go past it. Might we, do. We could carry straight on towards Middlewich. We've been there. Yeah, but we haven't been from here to Middlewich. No, we haven't. And we've got some friends near Middlewich that we want to see. Yes, we have. So we might go that way, <laughs> or we might go down the Anderton boat lift onto the River Weaver, but we might not. I love a good coat hanger. Coat hanger. Cliffhanger. <laughs> what am I on about? Anyway, if you've enjoyed this vlog, and we hope you have, and you're not already, please subscribe to the channel. Give it a thumbs up if you've liked it, and if you hit the notifications bell, YouTube will let you know every time we release a new episode. A fan of ours sent us a message the other day with some lovely advice. Justine, she's called. Yes. She's a looker as well. Oh, she is. No, she is. She's gorgeous. And she gives lovely hugs. She does. We got a hug at Crick, didn't we? We did. And she says, if you don't like the video, the best thing to do is to hit the thumbs down twice. <laughs> Click it twice, apparently. Fantastic. That's a great idea, isn't it? Right, we're gonna take some clothes off and catch some rays yes. and have a pizza. And we'll see you next week. Take care of yourselves, bye. ta -ra.
apparently back in the 1800s there was a saying okay and i can't remember what it was it's a strange saying so they have got jam butty mines gotten again and that's we've not been able to and that's not been possible yeah the next station stop will be lundwood <laughs> or far town <laughs> Uh, it's one of three tunnels on this stretch uh, from Preston Brook down towards... Ah! What have I got to say? <laughs> <laughs> and until recently, recently, <clears throat> there was a lot of coastal boats full of seamen going up and down. <laughs> what? Going up and down the river. Uh, not as much now. Uh, for the last couple of decades or so, this, I, I don't know. Oh, I can't remember. You put me off laughing now. Stop laughing. <laughs> Stop laughing. <laughs> But do it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear me. Are you ready? <laughs> Down at the <laughs> <laughs> Just down the bottom of the embankment is the river. <laughs> I'll stop. Yeah? You'd get a lot of coastal boats full of seamen going up and down the canal. <laughs> up the river. <laughs> Right, I'm gonna wait while you've calmed down. <laughs> and uh, I, keep, I keep getting stuck on that bit. I'm not surprised. 